आजमा लक आजमा आजमा वक्त आजमा अपनी किस्मत की बाजी आजमा I listen to it like all the time it's like my hype song it's a big like, tune but your dish shape like go la i'm like yeah 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 i always go into my kitchen no one ever puts anything on the fridge it's i'll quite, put them there yeah it's quite a good point you know because you're always going to your fridge yeah so it's kind of like a respectable place yeah it's where my food is and then it's the next and question and the next well. question is when are you having kids which is like the worst question then there's question. no question after that yeah because then it's it just like, no then it's just when are you dying die. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and it's unhealthy across the board for agreed, all genders agreed agreed so agreed. an intimacy coordinator on set is important for men and women because yeah. we actually don't know all of the men's experiences either god you like a chai ninja Welcome to Ek Cup Chai. This is a podcast presented to you by Independent Urdu. Independent Urdu is a media organization where you can find out a lot of information about British Pakistanis via their social channels on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe to find out more about that. Ek Cup Chai is a podcast where we are going to be talking to creatives all across the world and those especially within the South Asian diaspora and to break down conversations surrounding cultural identity. My name is Mim Sheikh. This is my co-host Ali and today joining us on the show is someone who is doing amazing things, worldwide superstar, I would say, Shruti Hassan, Indian actress. Thank you so much for taking the time out and joining us on today's show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. You're welcome because I I I've known about your work, but the first time we actually met was at Mira Sayal's BAFTA at fellowship. At a party. Yeah. At a oh party. my god. <laughs> but it wasn't any party. It, it wasn't just any party. It was no. quite a special party, right? Yeah. Cuz here a lot of brown a, folk. Uh, yeah, a lot of <laughs> brown illuminati in the room. <laughs> like, <laughs> Don't say. That. Ev- ev- but everyone was just there who was brown is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But working in the creative industry. Yeah, right? from the southeast. Yeah. Asian diaspora. Yeah. In and, a really unique way. Yeah, and yeah. Mira Sayal obviously uh BAFTA fellowship award so amazing she won and yeah. we were just celebrating her there yeah and we connected um yeah. and it was great to like meet and have that conversation mm-hmm. um to start just things off like how how do you find London like so far since you've been here London's always been like really special to me so during the pandemic I couldn't come much because of you know nobody could go anywhere really but um before the pandemic i was doing music here and london was a great part of my healing journey and rediscovery so i kind of call it my mother city okay because it's been really nurturing to me and, amazing and i love the grey skies the grey skies yeah because i love we... it i'm not liking the sun right now <laughs> <laughs> conversation outside um in the smoking area as you mm-hmm. do at parties right mm-hmm. and something that i remembered when i left is that you were telling me about uk rappers yeah i do love grime yeah but, give us some yeah. names bro she knows so many give us some I, names I, I, favorite, okay so my favorite song right now and forever and it may not be the best and coolest song is body by ras millions <laughs> i listen to it like all the time it's like my hype song it's a big like, tune but you are dish shape like cola i'm like yeah 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 so um just ret 32 amazing stormzy avelino all of them just like so it was so different for me because i grew up like listening to like american hip hop yeah. which is amazing and um 
like I like Kendrick Lamar, Joyner Lucas, like I loved all of them. But a friend of mine actually around 2018, 19 introduced me to like UK grime and stuff. And I was like, shit, these guys are serious. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The stories, it's like... Because when you was talking to me about it, I don't know whether it was my ignorance as such, but sometimes we're so in like this London bubble. That yeah. we sometimes forget. Dave, my favorite. Amazing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So good. We we sometimes forget how how much it can transcend and go to like places. No, like I actually England. think compared to other places, London isn't so much in a bubble mm. because of um, having to have awareness of culture and political conversations and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think that reflects in the movies and the music here as well. It doesn't feel so bubbly. I yeah. don't know if that yeah, makes yeah, yeah. sense. As in it's, it's yeah. easily accessible. Yeah, I don't have to explain myself so much to people. But yeah, I don't know a lot of people back home. I mean, I do know some people, but it's not common for everyone to listen to UK yeah. crime. And Your film work, um, you know, you're obviously really well known for it. Mm -hmm. um, you're the daughter of a very, very famous individual, which I don't want to make. Just that's, that's My mummy and my daddy. Your mum and your dad. <laughs> so your mum done... What was Lots. It? Oh, really? So they both started acting when they were kids. My mum was five and my dad was four. Okay. It would have been cute if they met then, <laughs> but they didn't. <laughs> but yeah, they've just... Um, cinemas like more than bread and butter in our home it's you know it's, it's our always, extended family yeah, yeah i guess if if it's always been there has it been do you think you would have fallen into it had you not been in that family like do you think you would have naturally gone there if your family maybe weren't that involved in say cinema in jobs um i don't know like maybe not honestly because even starting out I always wanted to direct and write. Okay. I never really thought about um, cinema other than that. And then I discovered music really early and that took over my whole life. And it was about rock and roll and Hindustani Sangeet and doing my riyas and that was all it was. So acting happened completely by mistake to me. Oh, really? Yeah. And I'd always been behind the screen helping my parents like as a costume assistant. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so I anytime always... they would be on like film set, mm. you would go and just... Yeah, I did ADR vibe. work for all the kids in all of my dad's movies. For so. anyone that don't know, that's additional dialogue recording. Yeah, you, yeah. You go in after you film the project and you record lines yeah. to help assist the end production exactly and i'm like a sync sniper now because that's what I, <laughs> you know i mean you've done it when you came in here you started moving camera angles, <laughs> like, this should be like this that should no be like no that. no i'm just bossy boots but <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, so i've just i was really lucky and blessed to meet amazing creatives okay who brought me to the level i'm at today that was your first thing right mm. obviously that doesn't translate now because you're a multi award-winning actress yeah. I found I saw a video recently where you put your awards on top of your fridge, <laughs> and, I, and I found it was the weirdest place to put your awards in a house. It's you open the fridge and your awards are up there. Yeah. Why are they on the fridge? Don't you feel like that's a South Asian thing as well? But yes, award, it is. I, I've got awards. Like, not a, it, anything. Not anything just goes on. You top. know, because yeah, but award, above the cover, I can relate to that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So no, no, no. It's just that you know, I've gone into. Okay, so my, my dad has like, so we have this Indian Film Fair Award. Yes. And he has 19 of them. Oh, wow. And he has like so many national awards and like, but he also has just like one like corner in the office in which he keeps his stuff where it's not like, look at my awards. Oh, They're okay. just like, oh, it's kind of there. Yeah, yeah. Hidden away in a corner maybe. Not even hidden. He's kind of like humble and grateful. Oh, like, okay. But I was just like, I've been to offices and homes where people are like, Make this is my living room and here's my house. <laughs> you know, and I'm just, I didn't want to be that person. And I actually lost one of them while moving. And oh, I was really? like, no, I should keep them where I can see them. Yeah. Like, how did I lose it? Was it stolen? Did I lose it? So then I was just like, I always go into my kitchen. Mm. No one ever puts anything on the fridge. It's I'll quite, put them there. Yeah, it's quite a good point, you know, because you're always going to your fridge. Yeah. You always so it's kind of like a respectable place. Yeah. It's where my food is. Yeah. You know. <laughs> it's something you need every day. But it's not like on a shelf. No. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's interesting because I, I just never saw it. But if you're telling me it's quite normal. Yeah, I feel like it's a South Asian It's, it's thing a South Asian I was thing. helping a friend move in recently who's not of South Asian descent recently. And the fridge was, the top of the fridge was naked almost. And I, it's I weird, looked at right? it from far and I just thought that looks so weird. As and I just started putting stuff. things on top Any of it. Any Indian house either has the ceiling above the fridge, <laughs> the low yeah, ceiling, yeah, 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 yeah. or it has 
old textbooks and like yeah. random newspapers yeah, or absolutely. whatever things, yeah. yeah yeah or the kitty litter thing or like <laughs> anything but it's never anything empty random, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 well I, well you might inspire people to maybe start putting some more stuff on the fridge so i don't know if it's like scientifically good for the fridge i'm just wondering <laughs> I mean, because I my ice maker doesn't work now Maybe because the of, weight of the awards. It's because you got so many. <laughs> so maybe stop being so good at your job no, okay. so that they don't give you I was awards. working with an Indian actor once who told me something and it always stuck with me. And he said, oh, you, do you think you'll win an award tonight? I was going to an, uh, to an award ceremony. And he said, I don't know, sir, maybe. And he said, always remember it's rewards, not awards. Oh, that's good. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, awards are one solid thing but the rewards will keep changing and keep growing as you're an artist I'm gonna, so i'm going to every time i leave a, a conversation i always remember a line yeah. i think that one unless you come up with some more better line no that's later. not even mine so i'm just handing over someone else whoever came up with that one that's akshay kumar <laughs> like he oh, was really? like yeah he she was says like my friend just so casual an actor so casually. Says, yeah. oh my friend just told me this so casually. Goes, oh yeah but it's akshay kumar <laughs> well he's not a friend he's my co-star yeah. like we're not like Amazing we're not like mates actor. or anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, she said it like it was a random person. Like, we wouldn't know who it was. Was that in a British accent? <laughs> we're not like mates or anything. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you done any British roles? Um, have you played anyone British with an, like a British accent? Before? Like what from like Birmingham? No, like, oh, that's not a Birmingham accent. No, that's not. <laughs> but like, that like, that like, was like, I've never been to Birmingham. Actually. Yeah, yeah. And no. go for the first, uh, like I, a Londoner. Have no, I haven't. Yeah. I mean, the the first Eng- English film I've just done is kind of like a British Indian accent, but it's more neutral and it's more leaning towards the Indian side because her family would have come in a little. Even the way I'm speaking to you right now is a bit cleaned up and polished. Oh, really? Yeah. How would it? What would it be like naturally? Just more casually, like relaxed. If I'm speaking at home, and okay. then my South Indian thing comes in a bit, like okay. So yeah, and then like I I even see like actors like. Um, say Priyanka Chopra get called out on her accent and I'm just like no 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 wait first of all as actors we do work on diction and accent yeah. and we have things even within Indian movies that we change but also it's more of a consideration that you should understand me quicker yeah so it's not like um like we're faking it but yeah. like you know it's just something that you do as a performer as you understand no of course yeah. absolutely yeah. I get it but I find it fascinating because it's like if you play so many roles yeah. and you have to read a script in this accent or you have to read a script in that accent, what happens to your natural accent? I don't even know what my natural accent <laughs> yeah, this is. is what that's find, the truth. That's what I find fascinating because you're you're doing so much work mm. to play other characters yeah. that when it now comes for you to be you, mm. what happens? Because I my accent ends up changing depending yeah. whoever I'm speaking I think to. my accent is clearest when I'm playing a character because then I commit... Yes. to a direction and I stay really like in it yeah but other than that like it keeps changing I grew up like in Chennai so I have a South Indian accent then I also live in Mumbai then I work in Telugu oh, wow. which is a different language completely but I also studied in America so when I came back from America I was like yeah my next song is and you know so it was just like <laughs> so my brain is like kitchery of like accents <laughs> yeah no it's good because it helps you in your career yeah um being obviously South Asian, but also being female, yeah. and you've climbed like a lot of ranks within, say, the acting world. Mm. What would you say have been like your main struggles, if there have been any, from like a female perspective and maybe a South Asian perspective? Do you think it's harder for, say, women who are like you mm. to climb up the world in, in, in that career path? I wouldn't say women like me, but I do think that there is a stereotypical mindset of what the the South Asian woman should should be. And I know Pakistani women feel like this, Bangladeshi women feel like this, Indian women feel like this. Maybe because there is and there may be 50% of it may be part of our cultural beauty and heritage. But we're also all a product of globalization. Yes. And you can't remove those um, influences. I grew up in an English medium school reading English books with Nirvana and Marlon Brando. Mm. So there was just no other way I was going to turn out as well as the way I was raised with really um, progressive, open-minded parents who were just like, be a good person. Mm. And the rules of boy and girl just never applied to us. Um, So they never never imposed any like gender um, stereotypes as in you're a girl, they didn't say none of that no which is is that because of their open-mindedness do you think that would be different 
Yeah, Let's it would be different like in other homes. Person yeah, I in mean, India. I'm in my late thirties and I'm not married, and no one's saying Which to me. Which is brilliant. Up. Yeah, because that's the so. first question on everyone's mind. Yeah, yeah, and I get asked it as an actor, and I'm like, just give it a cool, rest. bye. <laughs> you know, but like, it's there's just, more to life. Like, as in that that shouldn't be. I think I have nothing against it. No, absolutely not. You know what I find fascinating though? Everyone asks, "Oh, when are you getting married?" But nobody asks the question of, "Are you happy in your relationship?" Never. Because they assume you're miserable in marriage, yeah, I are assume. You, are you, <laughs> yeah, but everyone I speak to who ends up is married just wants to know if anyone else has got married. And then it's the next and question. And the next well. question is when are you having Can kids, which is then, like the worst question. Then there's question. no question after that. Yeah, because then it's it just like, No, then it's just when are you dying? When are you dying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to learn German and I only learned like I learned like few words like das Flughafen. <laughs> Actually it made me more aware of things that I'd never thought of before. You might not have been conscious of it. Yeah. Okay. But I understand why it's important in situations. I've had one situation where I wish there was an intimacy coordinator cuz his man crush yeah. is Chaba DJ. Okay. He quotes him at inappropriate moments in our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> the three G's. So, you know. In parties, when I first walk in, oh, I okay. feel like that teenager who never got asked out on Valentine's Day. <laughs> like, it just triggers me, like, really bad. because so I have. Do what do you do to overcome that? Well, you know what? My rejection started way before, because coming back to Valentine's Day, this <laughs> really it's cute it. guy was walking up to me. He was actually half... Yeah. <laughs> He was, uh, he was half Indian and half English, so... Your singing career, um, has that, has, have you done like live shows? Or? Yeah. In fact, I was doing most of them in London before the pandemic. Oh, really? Yeah. At like what places? Like the Troubadour, Islington, the Ned. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so I was starting to really like do sort of like a litmus test for myself okay. to perform to an audience who doesn't know me because that's a challenge yeah, 100%. with English music of course, of course. and see if they will stop eating and listen, you know, <laughs> first. Um, and that's how I started. But I've been singing since I was five. Yeah. So I did my first playback when I was five, did my first live show when I was six okay. and then continued doing music through my life. Is it um, when you first started, was it? Like singing in Hindi. No, English. It was always English. English. Yeah. From the from the from very, the very first song I ever wrote. That's so interesting because people would automatically maybe wrongfully assume yeah that because you are an actress who I can in... sing in Hindi. Tam I've sung in almost seven Indian languages, but I have never been able to write a song in my own Indian languages. Okay. Wow. Because they've always been my second and third language. So I can sing in them, I can understand so wait, them. So how many languages do you speak uh, in total? In school, so in school we had first language English, second Hindi, third was Tamil, or second Tamil, third Hindi, you could swap them out. Some weirdos would do French, but like... <laughs> you know, hey, we have there's, no, well. there's we have nothing wrong well. with that language, all right? Yeah, we have that here as well, though. I'm it's just, French, just joking. Spanish Man, here I don't well. just yeah, have that No, 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 I mean, it makes sense here. No, but even here, like... Why does it not make sense over there? The I suppose. world is a big place, you know? I agree. I agree I with you. I learned German. I did want to learn German and I only learned, like... I learned, like, few words, like, Das Flughafen. And I, <laughs> I can say one sentence in German, which is, Ich habe einen Schwester, which means, I have a sister and I'm an only child. Like, I don't know why I learned okay. that one sentence. <laughs> okay. Weird, isn't it? I get what you mean, though, because even here, like, you've got French, Spanish, German, yeah. and there'd be, like, a small popularity of, that would do French. The, re the, only, like the, the only reason I'm saying why French is because we have so many Indian languages, yes. we've not bothered learning okay. different script as well. Oh, really? So we can't read each other's stuff. Can you give us a sample? Uh, in Malayalam? Or, or in, in all? Want. Whatever one you want. What do you want me to say, though? How was your how's your experience been so far on the podcast? So in Tamil it would be Romban Alarka, which okay. is I really had a good time. In, okay. <laughs> in um in in Telugu it would be E experience Chala Bagundi. Wow, just it's completely the, different. Wow. Yeah, it's in like, Malayalam and Kannada, I can't even construct that sentence. <laughs> honestly, yeah. It's like Channa in but Kannada. You're, but you're so fluent in it naturally. No, no, no. I so I st I debuted in Hindi first. Then I did a uh, then I did a Telugu film, and I didn't know the language at all. So when I first got my dialogues and script and stuff, I needed them to be translated to English. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And then from English. Yeah, and I'm super dyslexic. So even now, on my nobody should ever see my script paper because I need to do 
drawings on them. Oh wow! Yeah, because I'm so, like, so you're image based. Yeah, in terms image of, like, based. Learning yeah. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and so the image based memory helped me learn a whole new language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But in a year, I learned the language. Is there anything that you've experienced right in cinema or film that you would like to see changed, like? anything that you you've you've experienced and the reason why i say that is because i'm doing a shoot at the moment right and they're introducing intimacy coordinators yeah i've had that as a job for someone mm -hmm. and i've done films where that hasn't been and it's so and it's awkward and you don't know what's going on yeah whereas now someone's employed to be yeah. an intimacy coordinator who comes in and helps get the scene mm -hmm. together right mm -hmm. Is that something that you'd like to see like more of in cinema or is that something that you think can be left? No, no, I think intimacy coordination is required, but yeah. maybe not like, because it, um, even in stunt choreography, or we do a lot of dancing, Yeah, you want to have the steps and the choreography, but you want to have um, spontaneity. Of course. So sometimes that gets removed, especially because now you're suddenly aware of body parts, mm. you know? which you mm. didn't think of before. Yeah. And you're like, you know, they had like yoga mat. And yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. I've never seen a yoga mat cut so small. They have, like, you know? they yeah. have this like round ball. Like that, a kidney thing as well, yeah, kidney you, pillow. You've got to put like here like this. And I'm yeah. just like, wow, okay, this is a whole new experience. Actually, it made me more aware of things that I'd never thought of before. You might not have been conscious of it. Yeah, okay. but I understand why it's important in situations. I've had one situation where I wish there was an intimacy coordinator because it was just really uncomfortable and there was no one to guide the situation. See, now Emma Thompson, for example, yeah. who I've done a film with, she spoke about this recently and yeah. she said they are absolutely paramount and they are needed 100%. from a female's perspective. 100%. Because a female will go on set, the whole crew will be male and the female sometimes feels like they might not be able to... I'm not worried about the whole crew being male because apart from my hairdresser, I mean, hairstylist or costume assistant, I've predominantly been on an all-male set Okay. for most of my movies. Okay. So the gender of who's around doesn't matter to me at all. It's the communication that's required and the understanding of the female perspective that, you know, now I do have directors who even in dialogue, I'd be like, can we have a discussion about this? Because a woman wouldn't actually say this mm. this way. And it's important and... And are these are these conversations, are, are the directors... Yeah. Are they receptive to it? Yes. Okay. Which and um, my first English film is a female producer, female director, female writer. Amazing. Which was like an unbelievable experience for me because yeah. now I didn't have to explain the female gaze. They get we it. were moving to the second and the third level and really telling a woman's story. Amazing. So that was great. But yeah. yes, coming back to what you were saying, Intimacy coordination, yeah, it's a definite discussion. Because I feel like need. it's a new thing and it's, well, make, practice, new for me, but I feel like it will become the norm. Like, Has to. Yeah, later yeah. down the line, just to make everybody feel comfortable. I just, I mean, the question is, would you do a somersault without a harness wire and not being trained? Then why would you do a sex scene without an intimacy coordinator? It's, that's, it's a very solid point, yeah. Yeah, yeah. just and, simple. Yeah, and yeah, and I think females should have more power with that when it comes to yeah. these decisions as well yeah. and the fact that they're asking people is great yeah. um, or men even we yeah. don't know the situation men have been in because i've also realized m men are a little more reticent to talk about their mm. experiences mm. that haven't been great yeah why, why do you think that is you just think maybe sometimes men don't the express. same patriarchy that oppresses mm. women also oppresses men from expressing themselves because mm. then it says be a man, take it. And then they don't speak about it. Mm. Because don't be a sissy. Don't say you were molested. Or, yeah. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's unhealthy across the board for okay. all genders. Agreed, agreed. So agreed. an intimacy coordinator on set is important for men and women. Yeah. Because we actually don't know all of the men's experiences either. It's very true. Do you know what and I if mean? if men find it hard to speak about these things, yeah. you never might not, you might not ever know. Exactly. Because they might not open up about these yeah. experiences. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is great. I have male co-actors or friends who are models who've told me things and I was like, you've never spoken about this? And they're like, no. Is there anyone that's caught your eye from like a South Asian perspective here or America that you've come across? I know like you've touched some musicians um, from an actor's or actress's point of view. I think Riz is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. 
I loved him in so I I'd seen other stuff but I really loved him in a movie called Sound of Metal. Oh, really yeah. good. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I really loved that. Um who else is that? There's tons of people like mm. Asim Chaudhry. You know what? Well, he was at the party as well. One second, I just have to tell everyone what happened. So I met Asim for the first time I met you. Oh, but was, that, I, was that at the bath thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I I only know him as Chaba DJ, right? <laughs> That's a lot of people. Like do. everyone. And I was introduced to people just do nothing by Shantanu, my partner who oh, you just really? met. Because okay. he's like, his man crush yeah. is Chaba DJ. Okay. He quotes him at inappropriate moments in our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> the three Gs. So, you know. All right. <laughs> so... When I when I told him, oh babe, because there's a time difference between London and India, yeah. and by the time we all got to know each other, it must have been like midnight in London. It was, yeah. And then Asim and I bounced off to a place that can't be named. Yes, you and did. then and that was super fun. Yeah. And then I I told Shantanu the next day I was like, listen, I've got to tell you something. And you need to take a deep breath because you're gonna be so upset. And he was like, what? Why? I said, so I met Chabati Ji. We became friends <laughs> and then I went to another party with him and we had a great time. He was practically in tears. Yeah, he was he like, to... you've had my yeah. team night. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, no, yeah. he's a great guy, man. We're, he was we're, amazing. We're going to get him on the show like soon as well to talk about like... Just such... Like things. all of y'all just had amazing energy, yeah. you know? I think, you know what it is? I think we've been working... I'm not going to speak collectively, but for me, I feel like we've been... Wor- I've been working in the industry here in the UK for such a long time. And you end up building like a little community of people that you just know from yeah. working in different spaces. And that night was like the first time where it was celebrated, I felt, for people. It just as an outsider and being from India, and I don't think we would have met if it wasn't for London, That's, to be completely yeah, honest. Very true, very true. So I just, I just felt like you guys could have been really clicky and you weren't. I don't think we're like, like I think... But that, that says a lot about your journey. Yeah. Because a lot of people who feel left out or on the fringes of things like the entertainment industry yeah. or like are trying to break in, when they do, they get clicky and then they're like, we've got to stick together. Yes. And then they forget that so, someone There's at home. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I never try to forget that because yeah. I know. And I could feeling. see that energy and I really appreciate it. Yeah, because yeah. that was like. I think London gets a lot of stick for being clicky. I think everyone was once that person and they forget that. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. You were once that person walking through that door. Yeah. And you're overwhelmed by what's in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. And especially for me, because it doesn't matter how much, like I've been acting for 15 years now, but I'm like so socially awkward and. No, you're not. In parties, when I first walk in, oh, I okay. feel like that teenager who never got asked out on Valentine's Day. <laughs> like it just triggers me like really bad because so I have. Do what you, do you do to overcome that? Nothing, because I don't even drink, so I'm just sober and my anxiety. You know? <laughs> yeah, but I've, I, I don't. I never see. That's interesting because I would have never have perceived it like that. that person. I would have been like, this person is so extroverted. And she's so like live for the party. She's talking really, to, yeah. This Thank is what, you. But this is why I think perception is very interesting <clears> because <throat> we can sometimes think that we are like this. Yeah. But then, well, how someone else sees you is different to how. I love connecting with people, but I'm also like so sensitive to energy. So yeah. when I don't feel it's right, I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. really bad, and I think it's me. Yeah. Because I think it's just a teenage thing. Yeah, but I think it's also because you're creative and you work in an industry that requires your emotions to be used. And we're rejected so much. As And I get that because you, yeah. you it's a lot of in the mind. But you know what? My rejection started way before because coming back to Valentine's Day, <laughs> Here this we go. really it's cute it. guy was walking up to me. Get the he was tissues, actually get the half, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was half Indian and half English. So all the girls liked only this one boy. Okay. And I said, hell yeah, he's walking up to me. And he's like, are you coming to play cricket or what? And I was like, damn it. And I was like, it's fine. I'll field also. No problem. Because I was it became a fielder. fielder on Valentine's Day. The only girl <laughs> playing cricket. So I think, I think it's really like every new party feels like I'm the fielder on that day and Valentine's. Has that become your name now? What, fielder? Fielder. Because <laughs> next time I see you, I'm going to be like, yo, fielder. It's a good nickname. What's yeah, happening? Man. It is actually, it's got a little ring to it. You never know when I'll save the game. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well said. Um, I can't let you leave here without trying to hear some of your singing. Oh, man. 
If you don't want to, okay, you don't sure. have to. But I just feel like... You know, they never ask actors. Like, they never treat them like a human jukebox. Like, mm, come on, give us one of your dialogues know, before and you I, leave. No, Do you know what I mean? I hate this. You I get me? This. Like, nobody... Look, yeah. I hate this. So that's yeah, why no, I'm it's saying... Fine, it's fine, it's fine. Like, press the button, turn it on. <laughs> yeah. I don't want it Make to be like that. No, no. If you feel comfortable... Sure thing, but what do you want to listen to? That's your first song that you ever did. But that's in Tamil. That's fine. I was five. No, we need a Hindi okay, song. Okay, wait, we'll we do a Hindi, Hindi song. song. We need a Hindi song. So I'll song. do my first ever Hindi film song. This is, so this song that you're going to perform, first ever... Hindi film song. That you sang in that the That I sang and was in the movie. Luck. My first Hindi film. The film was called Luck. Yeah, it was not so lucky for me. <laughs> <laughs> and the... But the song was... But the song's called what? Azma Luck. Azma Luck. Yeah. Okay, all right, so yeah. So Hindi audiences may know it. Yeah, yeah? absolutely. Okay. Azma luck, Azma, Azma vakt, Azma, apni kismat ki bazi, Azma. Wow, yo, that was just like, you don't have to give it any longer. I was like, moving away because no, I'm yeah. a loud voice. No, but yeah. that is, I think the high street heard that. Like, <laughs> the car alarm's going off, can you hear that? Um, that was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. You've been uh, tuned in to Ek Kap Chai, presented to you by The Independent Urdu. M- remember to subscribe to The Independent Urdu YouTube channel, watch stories about British, Pakistanis, and this has been Ek Kap Chai, where we speak to amazing individuals who have a special talent and... Uh, learn more about the South Asian diaspora. Until next week, peace. Cool. Cool. Was that okay? That was amazing. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. You're incredible. I just blabber and then sometimes I'm like, uh, nah, you're good. <laughs> natural, natural. So much about you. What did what did you? Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.